What is the power of a question? We all know about open questions and closed questions. If you work in an IB school, like I do, then you know about factual questions and conceptual questions, debatable questions. If you know the work of Grant Wiggins, then you learn about essential questions. And if you Google the questioning toolkit online, then you'll learn about probing questions, divergent questions, and a whole host of others. When I was a kid, I used to love the Douglas Adams book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And in it, there's a group of scientists that build an intelligent supercomputer called Deep Thought. And they ask it the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And after seven and a half million years of thinking, Deep Thought replies, 42. Everyone is outraged, and Deep Thought tells people, I think the problem, to be quite honest with you, is that you never knew what the question was in the first place. Einstein would have agreed. He once said, if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes finding the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I'd be able to solve the problem in less than five minutes. As teachers, we often ask ourselves more practical questions than these, like, what kind of planning do I need to do for tomorrow, Monday morning? Notice that every question, though, it begins with a premise. In this case, that there is, in fact, planning that needs to get done for tomorrow. It also has a paradigm. In this case, that I, as the teacher, am the one who does the planning and not the students or somebody else. Questions shift our attention from their premises and their paradigms to the promise of a solution, but oftentimes the question itself is more important than any particular answer to it. It's like the difference between voting between two people in an election and determining who gets to run in that election in the first place. As a teacher, we also ask pedagogic questions like, how do we teach questioning skills to our students? For this, a great tool that I found is called the question formulation technique. It begins with a cue focus or a question focus, which is a statement, an image, or a provocation. And then you explain the rules of questioning to the students, that you go for quantity of questions rather than trying to find the perfect question that you don't stop to discuss or answer the questions. You write down every question exactly as it was stated, unless it's a statement and not a question, in which case you change it into a question. Then you have a question storming. You take the closed-ended questions and you make them open-ended. You take the open and you make them closed and improve the questions. You prioritize the questions. Um, and find the three most relevant for that particular context. You determine your next steps. And finally, you reflect on the process and practice some metacognition. This is a powerful tool to help students take ownership of their own questioning, to build trust in the classroom, and to generate insights into student thinking. This year for me, questions took on a particular significance. You see, the worst year of my life was when I was in sixth grade. And every year since sixth grade has gotten progressively better than the year before it, which means that for the last 25 years, every year of my life has been the best year of my life. On the other hand, the worst year of my mother's life <laughs> was when I was born. Um, you see, my older sister was awake all day. I was awake most of the night, and after two months of not sleeping, my mother was asking herself, am I going to make it through this year unless things change? Fortunately, they did. One year ago, last January, 
my wife and I found out that we were pregnant with our second child. And I found myself asking, is this going to be the best year of my life or the worst? After our second daughter was born uh, last September, in addition to all of the struggles we anticipated, I found that there were a whole host of unexpected questions that came up. It seemed like both of our daughters needed constant uh, adult supervision, and yet we only had one nanny, so I asked, how is date night supposed to work? Then we made the decision that this would be our last year here in Vietnam. And I asked myself, how am I supposed to do my job applications between 3 and 6 in the morning when I actually have time? And then last November, uh, I found that my colleague and mentor had to go uh, heart surgery. And I found myself asking, how will we do this without him? Most of all, I was, found myself looking for a transformative question. A question that would help me take this year, despite its struggles, and help make it the best year of my life. I found myself wondering, could this be both the best and the hardest year at the same time? In Zen practice, there's a type of question or story called a koan. The most famous is probably, what is the sound of one hand clapping? Um, koans are not questions that have definite answers, but they force you to think about reality in a different way. The answer is not a resolution, but it's something that experienced moment by moment. A better example of a koan is probably, who am I? I never found a single question for the year for myself. But instead, every morning, I found myself asking, what question can I ask today to help make this year the best year of my life? These are the questions that stick with me from day to day, month to month, even from year to year. What are your questions? What question could you use to frame your year? What can we learn about each other if we shared the questions that we hold dear? How can we help our students better appreciate the power of questions? Thank you for your time today and for our time here in Vietnam these past six years. I'm out of time now, but before I go, I just want to ask, are there any last questions? Thank you.